just tremble, Lord God. You overcame everything. You have overcome already, Lord God. Because your victory, Lord, was already written, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for bringing peace in our lives, in our families, Lord God. Without you, blessings for all the peace that you've given us Lord God for the protection for the healing for the prosperity truly Lord your mighty hand will ease our suffering Lord God we have peace we have joy only through you Lord Trust your will, Lord God. 
May we trust you that you are in control of everything, Lord God. That you have plans for us. Maybe these are mercies in disguise. So we thank you, Lord God, and we continue to live for you. Good afternoon at good evening po sa inyong lahat ng mga viewers natin sa aking mga brothers, sisters, tita, tito, lolo, lola, ading, ate, kuya dyan sa CHCC, sa Baguio at kung saan man kayo nanonood ngayon. I hope, I pray that you are all well and that you are all doing fine especially ngayong pandemic na to. I hope you're staying safe and may the Lord continue to protect you all. So, nandito po muli ako para magbigay sa inyo ng mensahe galing sa ating Panginoon. So, I hope di po kayo nagsasawa kasi last Sunday lang ako ulit nag-preach. Pero, it is always an honor and a privilege to be um, called to uh, share God's word sa atin pong lahat. And I pray na sana po gamitin ako ni Lord para mag-speak po para sa inyo yung kanyang mensahe. And I pray na sana po lahat ng salitang sasabihin ko ngayon ay maging buhay po dahil po ang banal na spirito ang mangungusap po sa bawat isa sa inyo. Bago po ako magsimula sa ating mensahe ngayon, gusto ko po munang i-greet si Pastor Arnel ng Happy Birthday. So alam ko po na birthday niya po kahapon. <laughs> so I hope that um, um, more and more healthy years po ang ibigay sa inyo, Pastor Arnel. And that lahat po kami ay tunay na bless po sa buhay niyo sa lahat po ng ginagawa niyo. So Happy birthday po sa bawat sa iyo <laughs> sa bawat isa. Um, happy birthday po ulit. Uh, so yeah, samahan niyo po muna ako sa isang panalangin bago po tayo magsimula. Yes, Heavenly Father, we continue to glorify your name. Lord, use me to be a mouthpiece of your message today. Lord, may every word that I speak be alive, Lord, and that may you prepare, Lord, the hearts of the people that is listening right now. Make it a fertile soil where your word will be planted and grow and be able to transform their lives and for them to be able to apply it in their lives and also to share it to other people. Salamat po, Lord, sa inyong mga salita na tunay na nagbibigay sa amin that quenches our dry and thirsty soul. We give you back glory, praises, and honor. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. So, last um, Sunday po, pinag-uusapan po natin a home filled with God's power and God's peace. So, during that time, na-share ko po sa inyo ang three principles on how do we attain a home filled po by God's power and God's peace. Kasi di ba ngayon, lagi na tayong magkakasama sa isang bahay. So, we should be able to take advantage of this opportunity na magkakasama tayo for us to be able hindi mag-away-away or maging, lalo pa tayo maging separated, but for us to be united as a family. So, nung last Sunday nga, natutunan natin na nagsisimula ito by having a Christ-centered family. Hindi po to-do list ang unang gagawin natin. Pero, by making Christ as the center of our family, it means that we make Him as our chief cornerstone. So ang ibig sabihin po nito, si Kristo po ang magiging model natin, magiging reference natin sa buhay natin ng bawat isa sa pamilya natin. Whether ikaw yung tatay, ikaw yung nanay, ikaw yung anak, it doesn't matter. We are all sons and daughters of Christ. And we have to build our life not on other things. Kasi pwede natin i-build yung life natin sa empty promises such as wealth, good health, yung mga achievements, mataas na sweldo, etc. Pero kagaya ngayon ng ngayon pandemic na to, mawawala lahat to. Pero when we anchor our family in Christ as our chief cornerstone, even if the storms of life comes in our sa buhay natin such as this pandemic, matatag pa rin tayo. So yun po, we make Christ as the center of our family. 
Napag-usapan din natin that we have to clothe ourselves with Christ's character. At dun nga napag-usapan natin, parang sa luto lang, the five ingredients on having a healthy family. So natutunan natin yung unang ingredients was compassion which allows us to build connection kasi nararamdaman natin may sympathy tayo sa bawat isa. Napag-aralan din natin yung kindness. This means that yung actions natin motivated tayo by love and hindi sa mga reward, hindi sa mga kung anong makukuha natin but because we are motivated by love kaya ginagawa natin yon. Next ingredient was humility. This allows us to be able to listen to others uh, sa pamilya natin. No? Hindi na tayo lang laging nakafocus sa kung anong gusto natin, yung self-centered lang. Pero we are allowed to respect and to um, you know, listen to others sa tatay natin, sa nanay, or sa mga anak nyo. So, fourth was gentleness. Yun yung you're able to um, correct yung mga kasama mo sa bahay, you're able to speak even yung medyo masakit na truth, pero you guard your tone as you say it. Hindi yung, magugas ka naman dyan, or ano ba yan, mami? Hindi, di ba? Hindi ganun yung pagsasalita mo, pero mas mahinahon kang magsasalita at mag-express. And of course, patience. Kasi alam natin, magkakamalit, magkakamalit tayo, pero through patience, ma-avoid natin yung friction na pwedeng mag ng explosion of anger. And ang basis natin dyan is yung long-suffering, yung patience ni Lord sa ating lahat na ilang beses tayo nagkakasala, pero she's, he's still very patient. And yun na nga yung five ingredient. Pero natutunan din natin that there's a secret ingredient. Alam natin na you know, magkakamalit, magkakamalit tayo, pero we are to apply God's unconditional love. We choose to love instead of hate. Kung man mababa yung grade ng mga anak niyo, choose love. Kung medyo napagalitan ka ng pa, ka, um, parents mo, choose love instead of hate. And hindi lang ito power, ay hindi lang ito feeling, pero it is the capacity to be able to, you know, express yung pagmamahal din na binigay ni Lord sa atin. Hindi lang yung um, you know, yung love na feeling lang pero yung love na nanggagaling sa Panginoon. So yun po yung tatlong principle. And ngayon nga, matututunan naman natin yung mga susunod na principle. Excited na ba kayo? So, basahin ko po muna yung passage natin for today taken from Colossians 3 16 to 21. So katuloy po ito nung binasa natin last time. So sabi dito, Let the message of Christ Dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, Love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not embitter your children or they will become discouraged. Blessed be the reading of God's Word. So, yun po ang pag-aaralan natin today. So, yung pong five ingredients, including being a, yung secret ingredient natin of loving, um, the power of this love Hindi po ito basta-basta po natututunan, di ba? Sabi po sa Proverbs 22 verse 6, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So tayo po, hindi po tayo biglaan lang natutong magsalita, natutong maglakad-lakad. Alam niyo nakakatuwa, um, this pandemic kasi, alam naman natin, mas naging boom pa lalo ang social media. So, isa po sa um, sister-in-law ko, uh, pinopost niya po yung halos parang every month, at least may one video po siya dun sa um, isa sa pinakabata ko pong pamangkin. So, nakasubaybayan po namin lahat kung paano siya from baby baby na halos nakapikit lang to nag-start mag uh, you know mag dumilat ang mata, nag-start na siyang mag-crawl hanggang ngayon naglalakad na siya. So nakita ko po yung progression nun. And 
Yung alam nyo, yung pagsasalita, yung mga actions natin, yung abilities natin ngayon, hindi po siya basta-basta natututunan. Kailangan po natin ng training. And itong training po na ito, including po yung character natin at mga attitude natin, hindi po natin aantayin na mag-school na yung bata bago po natin to ituturo, di ba? Nagsisimula po ito sa bahay. So a training begins in our home. So po, ang fourth principle po natin is making our home the church. Hindi na po ito bago sa inyo, alam ko. Kasi lagi po natin ito pinag-aaralan ngayon. Sinusulong po ito ni Pastor Arnel. Ecclesia in the home. Teka lang po ah. So, Ecclesia po in the home. So sabi po kasi dun sa... Um, sa verse 16 to 17, Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and song from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father through Him. So, worshiping God doesn't stop po sa isang Temple. So, kung mapapansin nyo po dun sa lagi pong sinishare po ni Pastor Arnel na sa um, New Testament or sa Bible po, yung mga early Christian, they all started po to gather to train sa mga bahay-bahay. So, makikinda natin sa Acts 5.4, the from house to house po sila pumupunta. Sa 1 Corinthians 6.19, ina-address po ni Paul to the church in their house. Sa Romans 16.5 po, sinasabi ulit, church in their house. Sa Colossians 4.15, ganun pa rin po, church in her house. In fact, yung first po na outpouring of the Holy Spirit sa Acts 2 uh, verse 2, nangyari po ito hindi po sa isang Araneta Coliseum or sa pinakamalaking um, ano, uh, football, football stadium po. Nangyari po ito sa isang munting bahay. Sabi po doon, di ba? Um, And they came from heaven, a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. So sa bahay po ito nangyari. So alam niyo po, ang family po natin, ito po yung oldest or smallest unit ng small group natin or cell group for some sa history po ng buong mundo. Alam niyo, kayong sa ating bahay, um, we... We know each other so much. Alam niyo po kung ano yung magpapatawa sa bawat isa. Alam niyo po kung ano yung makaka-trigger ng anger, mang inis ng isang kasama natin. Lahat kayo, like a small group, di ba? Mahilig tayo magkainan. Saan ba nagsimula ito? Sa bahay. Three times a day. Minsan may merienda in between pa. O six times a day, magkakasama kayo kumain. Minsan, naglo-long trip pa kayo. So, alam niyo, ang family natin is also considered a small group or a cell group po. So, as a cell group or as a small group, the best person po na turuan ang bawat isa, hindi po si pastor or yung teacher po sa elementarya or sa high school or kung saan man yan. Kayo po ang bawat isa ang mas makaka, ang ma, mas karapat dapat or mas capable to teach and admonish each other. Alam nyo, importante syempre sila pastor, ang mga teacher natin, but still, hindi po natin dapat iasa lahat sa kanila. Our teachers, our pastors, our cell group leader or small group leader, they are all supplementary po. Pero po, yung training magsisimula po sa bahay. Alam nyo, hindi po natin kailangan pumunta sa physical church building wherein may malaking stage, may malaking altar, para po mag-sing ng songs and worship. Diba? Kagaya nung binasa po natin kanina sa passage natin. Sa bahay, we can sing hymns, songs, um, songs mga uh, worship songs, diba? Kahit sa bahay natin. Natatandaan niyo ba sa Bible, hindi naman pumunta si Lord sa isang kolisiyum para magturo. Pumunta siya sa bahay-bahay. Yung bahay nila Mary, nila Martha. Or yung bahay, diba? Nung meron yung time na binaba nung friends niya yung sa roof yung kanilang ano um, kaibigan para mahil sa bahay din yon natatandaan niyo ba yung story ni Zacchaeus 
in-invite niya yung si Jesus Christ sa bahay niya din. So, lahat po ng mga ministry ni Lord Jesus Christ sa bahay po nangyari. So, hindi po natin kailangan ng isang church building para po mag-training at mag-worship. Pwede po natin tong gawin sa bahay natin. We bring the church in our home. In fact, our family is the church itself. Sabi nga sa Deuteronomy 6:67, these commandments that I give you today are to be, su- up, be today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, di ba? Sabi, and when you walk along the road, road, so kung nagjogging kayo, <laughs> when you lie down and when you get up. So ako po personally, isa po akong product ng ganyan, um, ng training po sa bahay. I know na hindi po ako ngayon makakapag-able to speak to you kapag hindi, wala po akong training nung bata pa lang ako. Alam ko na um, yung, alam nyo, ang background ko po, di ba, is wala po yung tatay ko uh, and then my mom was working abroad. Pero yung modeling po ng um, family ko and even my mom, even she was away, was really good na until now po na malaki na ako kahit na nasa malayo po ako daladala ko po lahat ng mga learnings ko yung foundation ko po nandun so ganun din po sana sa mga anak nyo or sa mga kapatid nyo kung mas nakakatanda kayo or kung ikaw mas bata who cares you can still train your ate your kuya and even your parents di ba hindi mo naman kailangan magpreach eh. it could be done in many ways Uh, the mere fact na ina-apply mo yung buhay, yung buhay kristyano sa loob ng pamilya nyo, isa na yon sa pagtuturo. So, yun nga po, um, why don't you set po a time in your day na after nyo kumain, mag-Bible study kayo or kung hindi nyo kaya mag-prepare, mag-join kayo together as a family dun sa 8 o'clock habit po ng daily devotion or sa morning prayer. Why don't you tell a Bible story bago po matulog ang mga anak nyo? Why don't you, kapag one of the day, magkwentuhan kayo ng mga kapatid nyo, mag-sharing kayo na magkakapatid about God's Word instead na puro lol <laughs> ang pag-atupagin nyo o kaya puro work para sa mga nakakatanda o kaya panonood ng TV na news na puro negative naman, why don't you talk and dwell about good news naman? ba? Diba? So, para sa mga taong katulad ko na nasa malayo ang pamilya, why don't you set up a Zoom call or a Messenger call or Skype call or kung ano mang uh, media yan to be able to connect with them and set a time to pray as a family, to have a Bible study as a family, to just interact and reconnect as a family, especially during this time po. So yun po, yun po yung fourth principle natin. Bring the church to our home, or making our family, or our home, the church itself. Amen po ba? I hope, natuto po tayo doon. So, ang next principle po natin is conform to God's design for the family. Alam nyo, sin has destroyed the perfect and original design of God for the family. Sinira po ni ng Jablo yan. The scripture has many tragic stories about families due to sin entering their family. Diba? Nagsimula kay Adam and Eve. Anong response niya nung na, na, nag-enter ang sin uh, sa buhay nila? Nag-away sila. Blename niya si, si Eve. Ikaw kasi. Ganyan agad, ba? Diba? And then, nagkaroon sila ng two children and yung isang anak nila, pinatay yung isa. ba? Diba? Wow! That's how sin destroyed our family. Kay Abraham, nag-marry siya ng, ng mga, ng dalawang anak. And so, ano nangyari? Yung iba, pinalayas yung isang anak niya at saka yung um, isang asawa niya. And then si Jacob, ganun din. And even kay David na nag, ano ng many wives, na messed up din lahat. So, sin has really creeped in. And yun nga yung nangyari na destroy. So, imagine nyo po, kumain kayo ng sinigang or sabaw ng sinigang, gamit po yung fork. Makakain niyo po ba kaya yung sabaw na yon? O kaya gumamit po kayo ng spoon para kumain ng jolly spaghetti? Oh my gosh, di ba? Kailangan niyo. It's either napakahirap siya gawin or impossible siya gawin. It is because you're doing or using the utensils in the wrong um, purpose. So, ganun din po tayo sana. 
if you want the power or peace of God to manifest in your family, we have to conform to God's original design for our family. Kasi minsan, nag-o-overlap tayo, di ba? And ma- alam ko, hindi po ako married na tao pa, pero base po natin, hindi sa buhay ko, pero sa scripture muna, yung blueprint po natin on how do we conform to the original design of God. Ano po ba ang sinasabi ni Lord na dapat po na design ng isang pamilya? At makikita nga natin yon sa verses 18 to 21. So, sabi sa 18, Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Alam nyo, minsan negative tong passage na to para sa madami kasi nakalagay doon, submit yourselves. Ano ako, mas mababa sa asawa ko? So, just to clarify po, tong submission po na to is not seeing yourself as something or someone who is less. But because God promotes equality, di ba? Sabi nga sa um, Santo, sa uh, Timothy na um, ay dun sa binasa natin na here there is no gentle or Jews, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian. So lahat tayo equal po sa mata ng Diyos. So submission does not imply that the wife is less than the husband Since the scripture clearly proclaims that there is equality in Christ. So, so ano pong ibig sabihin nitong submission? So sabi po kasi sa Genesis 1, 26 to 27, makikita po natin dito sa passage na to, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness. So yung word, keyword po dyan, let us. In many theological po na mga... Um, parang pagtuturo, tung let us na to speaks of the triune God. Si God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And we all know that God the Son submits to the God the Father. Though they are equal, and yet the Son submits to the will of the Father. And similarly, nung create niya ang human in their image, my sense of submission then. These roles are there to bring order and avoid chaos and confusion. So, hindi po siya pag-aalis ng equality, pero hindi ang ginagawa po natin is hin, hindi maalis yung role ng wife. So, yun na nga po. Sabi dito sa 1 Corinthians 11.3, But I want you to know that Christ is the head of every man, and the man is the head of a woman, and God is the head of Christ. So si Lord na po mismo ang nagsabi dito that there is some roles. Kasi kapag po hindi natin na yung roles, di magkakaroon po ng chaos. So how do we con- wives conform to God's design for the family? Ang una po dyan is respect. Men equate love with respect po actually. And that is what submitting to husband is all about. Is irerespeto mo yung mga decision niya. Hindi ibig sabihin na wala ka nang masasabi, pero you do it in a respectful way. Na hindi yung, woo, ano, na, ano na naman naiisip mo dyan, wag na, wag, parang hindi ganon, pero irerespeto mo siya. Encourager. So sabi po dun sa binasa natin sa Genesis, ay sa um, First Corinthians, incur- or sa Colossians, I should say, be appreciative of your husband. Sabi nga sa isang quote ni Rob Hill Sr., A man with a dream needs a woman with a vision. So, ibig sabihin po nito, the woman has to push po yung husband. He has to pray with the husband and also invest in them. Next is, maging supporter po kayo ng asawa nyo. Behind every man's success is a very supportive woman. And, Ang best example po dito natin si Pastor Arnel at si Tita Olive, di ba? Makikita naman natin on how Tita Olive supports Pastor so much na sa lahat po ng planting nila, church planting nila, makikita po natin na nandun lagi si Tita O. So, kudos po kay Tita O, di ba? Best supporter ni Pastor Arnel. So, next po is peace. 
do not provoke your husbands to anger. Meron pong ibang way para maglambing at mag-express kung medyo nainis ka sa husband mo. Do not provoke mo them. Siyempre, kung pre-provoke mo sila, wala na talagang peace sa bahay nyo. Gera na yan. Next is Eros. So, medyo yang adult pa po ako, sensitive topic, pero alam nyo na po ito, di ba? Dapat meron pong romantic love. Alam nyo na po kung may kiniliti po kayo ng iyong asawa. Next po is being caring. Nurturing is the very nature of how God designed a woman. Makikita po natin yan very eminent from Eve, from um, kay Hannah, from Ruth, sa parents ni Timothy, from Louis Eunice, and of course, the Mary, the mother of Jesus. Very nurturing po ang isang babae. And that's how you should also um, conform to God's design. Being caring po, not only to your husband, but even to your entire family. And lastly, is trust. Dapat i-trust po, magtiwala po kayo sa mga asawa nyo. Jesus trust in the will of the Father, just like how Jesus trusted in the Father even nung i-crucify na siya. He still trust in the Father. Ganun din po sana tayo. And so, we can see here an acronym. Natuto po ako kay Tita Dang. <laughs> um, ang best way natin to conform to God's design for the family is to show respect. So, paano naman sa husbands po? Sabi dito, husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Sabi po sa Ephesians 5:25 to 28, yung love po na to is just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up. Wow! Kung meron pong nagre-reklamo dun sa submission, I think, mas mag-isip, or tumatawa yung husband dun sa submission, mag-isip-isip na kayo mga tatay at mga husbands dyan. Kasi, kung submission sa kanila, sa inyo po, ibuhos nyo, ibuwis nyo po yung buhay nyo para sa kanila, di ba? So, mas matindi po ito na requirement para sa mga tatay. So, um, wag po kayong um, parang relax-relax dyan, mga tatay, di ba? Um, yung love na kailangan nyo ipakita sa kanila is yung love na sa mga wife nyo is the same love as how Christ loved us. Wow! So, paano po yun mangyayari? Una is having a love that is absolute, pure and unconditional. Hindi po tayo nakabase sa kung sexy na, sexy pang asawa nyo o kaya um, banat pang mukha or masarap ang luto. Hindi po dun nagbe-base. Dapat po pure and unconditional. No matter what po, uh, any flaws, dapat po absolute po yung love natin. Next is giving. Alam ko, mga tatay, mahilig tayo sa me time natin. Madami tayong games. Nalaala ko yung friend ko. Dati mahilig siya sa games. Pero ngayon, nag-asawa na siya. Ay, wala nang oras. And that is part of loving. Giving your time. Diba sabi nga, the best um, gift we can give to someone is our time because we can no longer give it back. So, binigay mo na yung oras na yun para sa kanya. At mga husband, hindi lang po sa wives nyo, pero pati na rin po sa anak natin. Wag nyo, hindi po nyo asawa ang trabaho nyo. Hindi nyo po pamilya ang trabaho nyo. Pwede po kayong palitan ng trabaho nyo. Pero po ang asawa, ang familia hindi po yun mapapalitan. So, give your personal time to them. Be affectionate. Thank her Bless her and be proud of her. Ang mga wives po, gustong gusto po yan, ma-appreciate. Kapag nagluto po siya ng bistek at mukhang chapsoy, masarap pa rin po yan. I-appreciate nyo pa din po. At pati din sa inyong mga anak, be affectionate. Be personal, loving and taking care of her as how you would do to yourself. So sabi din dun sa Colossians, di ba? Parang kung ano po yung gagawin nyo on how you take care of yourself, bibilhan mo yung sarili mo, aayusan mo sarili mo, ganun din po ang ibigay nyo sa asawa nyo at sa iyong mga anak. And lastly, um, um, be elevating. Support her dreams. Kung gusto niya po magtrabaho uh, din, support niyo po kung ano po yung ambitions niya. Help her become a better version of herself. Huwag niyo po silang ipuput down, um, be discouraged, pero be elevating na i-lift niyo up din. Kayo po yung maging, di ba, sa wedding, paano ba yung vow? Di ba, nakasukob ang, ang babae at kayo nandito sa shoulder sa lalaki. It means, kayo ang magkikeri po sa kanila. So, 
ang best way to conform to God's design for the family as husbands, as mga tatay, is to show agape love. The same unconditional love of God. And next po, sabi sa, mga, sa verse 20, Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. So, in Exodus 20.12, Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord you, God, is giving you. Alam niyo po, sa Old Testament, literal po yan. Kapag po ang mga anak nag-disobey po sa mga parents nila, alam niyo, dedo agad. Totoo po yun. Madami pong verses dito. O yan. Meron pa sa Leviticus. O lahat. Patay. Proverbs 30.17. Patay yung anak. So, ay nako. Mag-isip-isip kayo. Very privileged tayo ngayon na kapag ang mga anak sum- mas pasaway, hindi dedo agad. So, ang best way for us to show um tag dito? Ang best way for parents uh, for children to um, show their what they call this um, yung conforming on God's design is basically obedience. Alam nyo, sa mga bata yun po ang laging inaatake ng kaaway. Alam nyo, yung best evangelical crusades happens on campus uh, crusades, right? And the worst also yung parang um, kabataan din yung nai-strike kapag ka nagde-decay yung society. We have drug addiction. Alam niyo po ba, based sa research ko, ang youngest or average na um, ang bata na expose sa pornography, 11 years old. And 22% equates to someone who's younger, 11%. Tapos nandyan din ang mga media, mga games na medyo rough. You know, kung ano-ano yung nailalagay po sa ating mga kabataan. So I hope na yung mga kabataan dyan, mga children, bantayan po natin ang mga sarili natin na huwag tayong expose natin and that we have to submit to our parents into, and those who are in authority. So una nga is obey your parents and those in authority. Kapag ginawa natin dun, hindi tayo mapapahamak. And sabi din ni Lord na kapag ikaw nag-obey, then you will live long. Yun yung promise niya. It's the first command with a promise. And totoo yun, di ba? Kapag ka nagsasubmit ka sa authority, hindi ka makukulong, hindi ka mapupunta sa masamang bisyo na pwedeng maka, makakitil sa buhay mo. So, obedience. Next is be the best version of yourself. Are, you, are your current activities bringing value sa buhay mo? Are your circle of social life giving value sa buhay mo? Or is it make, you know degrading you? So, i-assess nyo. Be the best version of yourself. You only live once, di ba? So, might as well be progressive. Next is, ang priority nyo is education. Lagi itong sinasabi ng ating mga magulang. It is our important na study in school. Mag-aral tayo. Habang ngayon, free pa at malakas ang mga parents natin, huwag natin sayangin yung opportunity. And more importantly, huwag natin kakalimutan to study God's Word. Hindi yung, ay kapag matanda na ako, kapag adult na ako, bago ako magbabasa ng Bible at magdi-devotion. Hindi ah, hindi ganun magsisimula yun. Ngayon pa lang, bumabad ka na sa Panginoon. Train up yourself while you can still absorb it, di ba? So, yun yung foundation nyo. And lastly, YOLO, you only live once. So, wag yung antayin kapag matanda na kayo. Do not waste your youth, your energy into useless things. But offer your life to God while you are still young. So, ang best way for us to conform to God's design for the family as children, hindi kayo yung mas mataas sa parents nyo, ha? Hindi kayo yung mag-uutos-utos sa kanila. Instead, you are the one to submit and obey to them. Because they are your elders and they are wise. And that yung authority natin is our training kapag nagsasubmit tayo. So yun, children, obedience. Lastly, sabi, fathers, do not embitter your children or they will become discouraged. Tung fathers po na to, um, hindi lang po ito para sa mga tatay, pero para sa both parents po ito. And based po, paano po ba natin may embitter ang ating mga anak? Based po sa research na nakita ko, um, oh, responsibility ng parents to nurture and train them and what embitter sila. 
So, sabi daw dito, ma-imbitter natin sila kapag ka we are not disciplining them. Masyado kang lenient kasi ma-spoil sila, di ba? And hindi na sila magiging thankful at magiging mas pasaway pa sila. Giving improper discipline then. Yes, do not spare the rod. But at the same time, after mo pupaluin, dapat meron ka pong chok na nakasama after no, na ibigay niyo po sa anak niyo. Dapat balance po tayo. Also, when you neglect them, puro trabaho, 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 tapos uuwi ka, tulog na. Hindi po puro ganun. Dapat po, you give time to your to your family. You give time to your um to your children. Kamustahin niyo sila. Sila din, nai-stress din naman sila. So, kamustahin niyo po sila. And ne next is never encouraging them and never showing them affectionate. Minsan, sa ating mga cordilleran or mga ano, hindi tayo showy ng affection. Minsan, parang KJ, ganun din minsan. Yung mga anak natin natututo. Eh. Ayaw na tayo ihug. Ayaw na kayong ihug and kiss. Huwag po ganun. Be encouraging. Um, do not always look at their faults, but also um, look at yung mga positive traits din ng mga anak nyo. And, you know, showing favoritism toward other siblings then it's a no-no po. Alam ko, minsan may mga <laughs> mag-aaway sila sinong mas matalino <laughs> or sinong mas magaling, di ba? Pero dapat pantay lang yung tingin po natin sa ating mga anak. Wala pong uh, favoritism. So, yun po sa mga parents on how we conform to God's design for the family din. Huwag niyo pong i-embitter ang ating mga, inyong mga anak. So, just to summarize po, how do we fill our homes with God's power and peace? It starts by having Christ at the center of our family, clothing ourselves with Christ's character, yung five ingredients, choose love over hate, yun po yung ating secret ingredient that despite of shortcomings, choose love anyway. Bringing or making the home as the church, ecclesia in the home. And lastly, conforming to God's design for the family. And bago po ako mag-end, sabi po sa John 1.12, But to all who did receive Him, who believe in His name, He gave the right to become children of God. So our family belongs to an even bigger family. And that is the family of God. Kung po kayo, personally, hindi pa po kayo, sa tingin nyo, may doubt pa kayo kung parte kayo ng pamilya ng Panginoon. This invitation to be part of God's family is for everyone. Si Lord po, Jesus Christ, died on the cross for each and every one of us, regardless of our gender, our age, our past po, our mess, kahit na po makasalanan po tayo, He is inviting you. He died for you. And He resurrected and conquered the grave for you. So, inaanayahan ko po kayo na samahan po ko sa isang prayer para po i-accept itong invitation ng Panginoon para sa iyo, para sa pamilya niyo, na maging parte tayo sa pamilya niya in God's family. Let us pray. Yes, Lord. Salamat po sa inyong pagmamahal. Thank you, Lord, for your unconditional love for each and every one of us. Thank you for your love for our family. Thank you for what you have done in the cross that because of our sins, Lord, napako ka po sa krus ng Kalbaryo to shed the blood and to be the ultimate sacrifice, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Pero hindi po doon nag-end. Um, nag But on the third day, bumangon ka po from the dead and you were raised and you conquered death. And now, Lord, you are our Lord and Savior. Lord, we ask you to enter our lives. Lord, we ask for forgiveness for all our sins sa mga kasalanan po namin. At Lord, naway kayo po ang maging Lord and Savior at maging hari po sa aming buhay. Hindi lang po sa buhay namin, pero sa buhay ng bawat pamilya namin. Tulungan niyo po kami maging isang mabuting husband, wife, or anak, Lord, or children. Lord, may you be at the center of our family. Lord, may you help us to become more like you. 
Lord, help us to love instead of to hate. Lord, help us to share your words sa aming mga kapamilya at even sa mga extended family namin. And Lord, help us, Lord, to go back to your original design. Lord, alam namin that when we do this, Lord, when you are with us, we will become victorious and that we will be able to experience your power, your peace sa buhay namin and sa buong pamilya namin. We give you back glory, praises, and honor. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. So ayun po, naway natuto po kayo ngayon. And sa uulitin po ulit sana, for now, stay home and stay safe. God bless! We pray for blessings. We pray for peace. For family protection while we sleep, we pray for healing, for prosperity. We pray for your mighty hand to ease us suffering. Oh, Blessings come through raindrops. What if your healing comes through tears? What if the thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know your need? What if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise? Tears. What if the thousand sleepless nights?